see everyone again. So like I said at the start, we're working on guard passing this week and specifically we're working on putting our opponent into uh, sort of difficult passing situations or positions. OK, so what we looked at last class was getting to the double unders, which is like a really folded, heavy pressure style position where I'm folding my partner's body, smashing their hips down and making it difficult for them to start to extend and push me off of them using the guard effectively. We're going to use a similar position tonight. However, we're going to look at the half guard as a position that we're going to be passing from. Now, let's just briefly talk about the half guard in case you're unfamiliar. So the half guard is any time that my leg is stuck in between my opponent's opponent's leg. Okay, so this is a half guard. One of my legs is in between his. So as opposed to any sort of guard where both of my legs are in the middle, right, a full guard here, half guard is where it's one in, one out. Now this can be an advantageous position for the bottom person, but it can also be an advantageous position for the top person. That's what our focus is today. How can we use this position to pass our opponent's guard? We're going to be passing the half guard against a position that the bottom person is not really comfortable in because maybe they don't have a good half guard game or maybe we sort of shut down their ability to use their half guard. Now, how would we find ourselves here? Let's talk about context real quick. Why would I find myself in a half guard? Well, maybe I'm passing his guard. I'm trying to move around from side to side and I fall to one side perhaps and I accidentally sit down on my knees. Now he's trapped me in a half guard. Remember, we never want to be passing from our knees if we can help it. We want to stay on our feet because that makes us more mobile. It allows gravity to help me push down more on top of him. But it's inevitable that you're going to fall onto your knees at some point, And it's very likely that your opponent's going to put you into a half guard. So once I find myself into a half guard, I'm going to start to attack a pass. And maybe I just choose to go to the half guard position. Maybe I feel like this person doesn't have a good half guard, so I'll purposely put myself there. Here's what we need to remember. As long as I can keep my chest in front of this top knee and my left leg in front of their bottom knee, they're not going to be able to get back to guard now because I'm blocking the legs that he needs to use to pull back and put me back in guard. Boom. If he can do this, now we're back in guard. We have to try to pass from the top again. So if I can beat his knees by getting in front of them, now I have a pretty good shot at passing his guard. Let's first talk about our frame battle from here. We're going to look at two different passes tonight from this position, but let's first talk about the frame battle. We've already beaten their knees. We've gotten our chest in front of their top knee. Our thigh is in front of their bottom knee. Our opponent is almost always going to be trying to use their arms to push us away. We need to understand that this is two separate halves that we're trying to get past, his legs and then his arms. In order to beat these frames, I want to try to change the orientation of my body. So we're going to look at two really easy ways to beat the frames. The top arm here, this is the main frame that he would use to hold my body weight up. With this arm engaged, I can't move forward very easily, right? He's going to keep it very strong and tight. I can't move in. This bottom arm is blocking me from grabbing his head. So Coach Seth still has a pretty good shot at defending his guard. We want to obviously not allow this. So the first thing that we're going to look to do is we're going to look to disconnect ourselves from the top frame by simply moving further than his arm is reaching. As I do that, I'm then going to bring my head down and use my head to start to push his elbow up. This is going to allow me to start to break the structure of his arm, making it more difficult for him to use that elbow to frame and push me off. From that position, I'm now going to swim my hand underneath and get an underhook, cupping the shoulder, and now I'm going to flatten my opponent down. Once I have him flat here, his chest and my chest are connected together. Now, beating this arm is going to be very simple. I can simply swim, come underneath, and we're going to cross face our opponent. So a cross face is where I use my shoulder right at the tip of his chin. And I'm accessing this as a lever to help me rotate his spine away from me. This breaks his, his uh, posture, making it very difficult for him to turn back in and start to get his guard back. So this is our first sort of setup. We want to be able to get to this position first. A heavy cross face with a topside underhook. So we're going to warm up by using this. First, all right, guys, so let's look at this again from the top. So I'm inside the guard. I want to beat the top knee, make sure I have his bottom knee covered as well. My partner's going to be framing and pushing me off. I'm going to disconnect and then use my head to start to push his elbow up a little bit. 
You can also reinforce and try to push his elbow up to get that underhook as well. Figure out which option works best for you. They're both fine, okay? So again, you can either use your head as a tool to assist in the underhook, or you can use your forearm as a tool to assist in getting the underhook. Either way, I'm trying to get his elbow up, so there's this nice gap that I can stick my arm through and cup his shoulder. Once I'm here, I'm gonna drive him flat to the mat, and now I swim in, collect his head, and now notice how I use my shoulder to turn his face. You can stop once you're here. We'll talk about the pass next. Just be very controlled here, guys. Don't overshoot this, or else you're gonna allow them to offset your center of gravity and roll you. So make sure that you're in very good control of your alignment. So your base, posture, and structure as you're performing this movement. Okay, guys, so I'll demonstrate this again from a different perspective. Let's spin this around here. So let's say I'm standing up, I'm passing, and I choose to drop down into the half guard. I beat the frames, I beat the leg frames first. My partner is gonna be trying to frame and push me off. So I'm gonna start to disconnect, drive, and get my underhook. I start to flatten him out, collect the cross face, heavy on the chin. I want to make him turn and not look at me. If I can do that, guys, this is going to be a very strong passing position. It's similar in effect to how we passed last class by folding them with the double unders. I'll demonstrate once more without talking. Let's come back to the front here. So again, my shoulder's heavy. I want to turn his face away from me. Okay, guys, so let's work by getting into a good cross face position from the top half guard, and then we'll pass next. Any questions on that? Okay, guys, let's get to work. Ready, one, two. So I, I wanted to take just a quick moment to address a couple common things I was noticing in that first setup sequence, and then we're actually going to do the pass. It's imperative that when you're learning passes, you're not just doing passes in this sort of vacuum chamber of, I'm just going to freely do a pass and my opponent will not give me any feedback and they will not give me any obstacles to worry about. That's, it's really a false positive, right? You're not really getting a whole lot of benefit from your training out of that. So we want to make sure that we're trying to emulate what an opponent would actually do. So let's look at a couple things here. If Coach Seth is playing half guard, he would want to keep as many frames up as possible. It's the same way as if we're playing open guard, right? He wants to keep as many frames in between me and him as possible. In half guard, he wants to keep his legs in front. If I manage to get past his legs, he wants to keep his arms in front. He wants to stay on his side so that his body is acting like a frame. This is critical, guys. A lot of us were trying to just, you know, come in and our partner was already flat on their back. This is not a realistic re expectation, right? If your partner's just flat on your back, they can't reach up and frame effectively because his body is not in an orientation that he can direct his frames towards me. So don't be worried if your partner's flat on their back. Bottom person, let's stay on our side so that we're creating a realistic sort of uh, reaction. This now forces the top person to have to deal with the top side frame. From here, we could deal with it by either disconnecting and then using our head to create the opening to slip our underhook in, or we could push the elbow up and then insert our underhook. Regardless, I want to make sure that I'm now trying to flatten him out. I'm trying to roll him out like dough. Coach's back is a frame, right? So if I take away his arm frames, if I just do this, yeah, I'm passing his half guard. You're not, he's not flat, right? A good half guard player doesn't care. They're gonna still come up and take your back from here. So let's make sure we're rolling him out and flattening him. So once I get this underhook here, I'm gonna use my chest to push forwards using active toes to drive. From this position, he probably doesn't want me to grab his head. That's a realistic expectation, so instead I'm just gonna swim my hand through, collect the head, and cross face from here. Now that we're in this position, and again, I want you guys to be very particular when you're practicing that, bottom person creating good reactions so the top person can actually use realistic passing scenarios. But now that we're here, we have a very strong position. We have a top tied half guard with a cross face and an underhook. Let's pass their guard now. So the way that we're gonna pass is very simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna look to free our leg that's in between their legs. And I'm gonna bring that leg across straight to the mount. I'll demonstrate what this is gonna look like and then we'll talk about it. So I'll start here in my cross face and uh, underhook position. Here we go. So I'm 
So now I managed to go from the top of the half guard directly to the mount. An extremely dominant pass that puts us in a very dominant position. Let's start with this one first, and then we're going to talk about how our opponent can start to create reactions that will force us to work a different form of a pass. So let's rewind the tape. We're going to start here, guys, again, thinking in the context. Maybe I'm passing, and I can beat this knee, boom, and I come into half guard. My partner's framing me, so I can disconnect, come in for the underhook here, flatten him out, and come in for your cross face. From this position, guys, we need to make sure that I'm still keeping my leg in front of his leg. You can even take your foot and brace your foot against their thigh. The reason I would do this is so that he can't pull that leg out and put me back in guard. This is no good. I never want to go back to a closed guard. So you can even keep your foot bracing here. This is not necessary. If your flexibility doesn't allow it, just keep your knees pinched. Now from this position, I'm going to drive and put my head on the mat so I can create a bit of a tripod effect. But before I do that, I need to create a strong post. Now, I'm not going to let go of my arms to post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to open my elbow up. This does two things. This creates a post that I can now lean on. And it also breaks the structure of his arm, putting his arm at an angle that's difficult for him to use. So I'm going to lean forward, open my arm, and put my head on the mat. I'm going to keep my head up a little bit just so that I can talk to you guys. But this whole time, my head's going to be down in that tripod position, OK? The whole time I'm passing, I want to be here. But again, so I can see you and talk to you, I'll keep my head up. So from this position, once I'm leaning forward, I'm going to take my left foot, OK? And we'll rotate back here. I'm going to take my left foot, and I'm going to hook it right inside of his knee pit. Now notice how I'm on my tippy toes here. I'm bringing this foot over, and I'm hooking it right into his knee pit. I'm going to kind of circle my toes to dig them into his knee pit to really get that hook position. So I hook, dive in, and now I've hooked in here. All I'm going to do from this position is continue to lean my weight forward as I lift my butt up and slide my knee right over top of his other leg. Now that I'm here, I have two butterfly hooks hooking on his thighs. You can maintain this position if you're comfortable here or what we would recommend is to simply pull your feet out and finish in the mount. So if you notice the entire time, my hands never left this clasped position with the cross face and the underhook. That's why this is such a dominant pass. It's a slow and controlled pressure pass that doesn't involve a whole lot of movement out of the top person. Once you get them into that cross face half guard position, it's going to be pretty easy to finish. Let's spin this and look at the footwork. So again, we're starting half guard. Here, let's scoot over a little bit. So from this position, I beat the knees. He's using a frame setup, so I'm going to disconnect from the frame, start to push, dive underneath, get the underhook. Remember, guys, you can also use the hand to push up and underhook here. I go chest to chest, and notice how my legs kind of leapfrog their way up to stay close to him. Now from this position, I lean forward and open up my elbow. Bottom person. This should not be a comfortable pass. That's the goal. This is a pressure pass, so it should be pretty uncomfortable on the bottom. Now, once I'm here, though, I'm going to take my foot, hook my toes in his thigh. I'm now going to start to push as I hop my leg up and bring it over top of his thigh. So now both of my feet are hooked in between his legs. Once I'm here, I simply take my feet out, and I finish in the mount. All right, let's go ahead and rotate again. I'll show it once more from this perspective. So we're here. He's framing. He's blocking. So I push up. I come in. I get my underhook. Hips up. Hook. Come through. Straight to the mount. OK? I'll show once more from the rear without talking. We're going straight to the mount. So this position that we're going to, this tripod position, we're just lifting our butt up. That's it. Once I lift my butt up, I hook their knee and slide my legs over top of their legs. Take your time. Don't rush through this. It's just like with our double underhook pass from last class. The more you rush it, the more likely you're going to lose control of your balance and give them control of your balance, which will result in you getting swept or, worse yet, submitted. All right, guys? So let's work our cross face pass now, working to go straight over to the mount. All right, guys, any questions? Yes? Because at the very beginning, when Coach Foster was framing, 
Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, so if they have a thumb down collar grip, we can try to disconnect to break that grip. But the thing with a thumb down collar grip is that it's actually a pretty weak grip. It's actually pretty easy to just slide my arm underneath. If you were to go for a thumb up collar grip, this is stronger, but the problem is that this is even easier to break. So it's like a double-edged sword, thumb up, thumb down. They both serve purposes. Regardless, I'm still gonna try to disconnect and get underneath that arm. Good question. All right, guys, let's work this. Ready, one, two. So don't worry, as always, we're just gonna add on to this. We're not gonna do a brand new thing. We're just gonna continue to um, create some scaffolds off of the sort of skeleton that we've just created. So remember, our goal when we're passing this position is to put our partner in a position where they cannot defend the guard very easily. So we're doing that by utilizing the cross face and the underhook. The cross face turns them away. The underhook prevents them from turning in. So we have opposite corner rotational control. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to address a common issue that you might run into. As you're attempting to hook your toes in and slide your knees straight to the mount, your partner's probably gonna try to keep that leg up to block you. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna go straight to a knee cut instead. Okay, so let's take a look. So I'll kind of fast forward quickly. So we're here, I beat the frames, I get into the cross face and the underhook, I flare the elbow first, guys, so that way I have my post so that as I lean, I don't just get rolled over. If I don't have that post, as I lean forward, you're basically just giving him a free sweep. So be very conscious. Reinforce your base first so that as your center of gravity shifts, you're not gonna lose your balance. So now here's the situation. As I go to strip my leg out and pull my leg out using the hook, his left leg is probably gonna be ready to come up like a knee elbow connection to block me from going to the straight to the mount. So if rotate slightly, so as I start to bring this knee up, he's gonna be tucking this knee up high. So look, he's blocking me here. So in this situation, I can't go straight to the mount. That's a bummer, but of course we're gonna have something we can do. So from here, instead of trying to go straight to the mount, I'm just gonna cross my knee over to the other side, get a good kickstand, and then sink my hips to the mat to finish my knee cut. Once I finish my knee cut, it's just like we do whenever we do our knee cut position. I'm gonna to start to walk my hips back, turn his knees away, and finish in a good side mount. So we're still passing, we're going from the guard to a top position. It's just that instead of going straight to the mount, which would be beautiful and ideal, we'll opt to go around to the side control instead, okay? Let's look at the footwork. Okay, so remember, I'm beating the legs, I beat the frames, I cross face underhook. From here, I open the base, lean, get up on my tippy toes, I'm hooking, I'm getting ready to extract the leg, but he's blocking my leg. So instead of going over to my right side, I'm gonna cut my knee over to my left side. But notice how I'm still keeping the underhook in the cross face. Now that I'm here, I step my left foot out to reinforce my base on my opposite corner. Now I can just slide my hips to the floor, tippy toes, turn his guard away, and finish in side control. Remember our goal and our concept for passing is to always point their guard away from us. It's like weapons, I'm trying to point those weapons away from me so they can no longer attack. So if I can point his guard away, it's much safer to get up on top. Okay, let's look at this again once more from the uh, front position here. All right, guys, so I'm starting on my feet. I get in, he's framing, he's blocking. So I disconnect, I dive in, I get my cross face and the underhook. I'm gonna start to come up on my tippy toes. I'm hooking, but he's blocking me. So I go down, knee cut instead, and just slide your butt to the floor. Once I'm here, we're golden. Okay, we've passed the guard. We can start to push the hips away and build up to our base. Okay guys, so same exact setup. Everything's the same, it's just that this time, our partner's gonna block us by keeping the knee high and tight. So we'll cut across to the knee cut position and we'll finish that way instead. All right, let's get to work. One, two.